Hello, and welcome back to another day. If you remember, on day one, we unboxed all the hardware and tried it in the case for the very first time. We have until the end of the week to finish the build. Hopefully, uh, everything goes smoothly and it posts, but still, with all of the cables to make and all of the tubing to make, we're really up against it. So, actually, come to think of it, I've got an idea. <laughs> Well, wasn't that easy? <laughs> if only we could do that for every build. Don't try it at home. Um, complex things may occur. So, as you can see, uh, while off camera, I got quite a lot done. Um, it wasn't that I didn't want to show you guys, but I need to get it finished before Friday, and I don't want to show putting the motherboard in again and again every time I try something. I didn't want to do it with the tubing either. Um, so I first played around like positioning all the fittings, figuring out how the tubing was going to go. Uh, I came to a really good arrangement with the offset fittings for the CPU. So no bends were necessary there. And for the top part where I was expecting to use female females because we practically only have straight samples for this tubing, uh, I managed to find two bent samples, the only two we have. So very cautiously, I made these from acrylic twice over, checked they were perfect, that they fitted right, and then duplicated them in satin titanium, put them all together, and here we have it. So all of the tubing on the inside is done now. On the, on the outside of the 909, where the radiators and the pumps got, there's nothing. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Um, but everything in the middle connects directly to the distro, that's all there. Uh, I did also change all the fittings and I've kind of decided against blue because as you may have seen, uh, I also changed the CPU block. We got the first ever sample of uh, satin titanium top. We typically haven't made any big satin titanium pieces because it's it's a challenge to cover all sides of a part. So this is the first piece. Uh, I also have the accent in satin titanium for the first time. And to, to make it all fit together, I wanted to go all the way from the tubing to the, to the CPU, like without interruption, that there wouldn't be a black boundary and then a blue boundary. And the loop looks like one continuous part. So um, quite different than how it was looking when we closed on day one, but I, I'm really happy with how it is. And because of this, I will probably go with the turquoise sleeving. Uh, it's quite, quite interesting, quite unique, and hopefully it won't look in any way uh, too much like our original 909EK build that we had way back in Computex 2019. So uh, I've decided like, to keep it fresh, uh, we'll go with the turquoise and um, keep moving with that. Uh, nothing surprisingly uh, went too difficult with the tubing. I wanted to show you on camera what what tooling I was using. So this is the this is the tube cutter that I was using, which has like roller bearings and a super sharp blade. I can demo it for you on a piece of tubing so the tube goes into the rollers and then you just very carefully line up where the blade's going to come so if you've made a tiny mark or you can you can offer up like what you're trying to duplicate if you've already made it in plexi uh, and check that it's right then tighten it up and you can see that it starts to score the tubing after a few spins, tightening, spinning again, actually starts to cut surprisingly fast. We, we went with, uh, th this tubing is not 10, 12, but around 10 and a half, 12, because if we had uh, 
too much thickness then cutting it like this is a problem and if it's also if it's too thin then uh, you can collapse the tubing uh, it wouldn't be strong enough and you make it elliptical and it, uh, it will leak in the fittings so uh, this middle ground seems to be working really nice this was our first try and I think I'm enjoying it more than, than making the acrylic to be honest so can you mix titanium and nickel uh, the plating itself is not actually uh, titanium so uh, no you couldn't mix titanium inside a loop but that's just what we call it because that's what it looks like uh, you can see that I quite quickly made it all the way through the tube and it's not not uh, a really thin wall from from there I had to clean it up so I filed the inside edge and the belt sander in the back of the set I used to quickly make a chamfer so just just holding it down and one spin and and that was it um, they fit inside the fittings really nice they didn't mark from the compression ring at all uh, the the tool itself did leave some marks on the finish but luckily it's not too wide so it's concealed inside the compression ring so yeah that's that's the story with the tubing. Uh, if you watch the time lapse really fast, you'll see it took me quite a few tries to get it all right, but that, that's the way tubing always goes. So, what are you guys up to? Yeah, it does It does have to be a brass part to have the, the satin titanium finish. Some of our parts are aluminium that are anodized, so like the, the terminal cover on here, but it's, uh, a perfect match yeah the, this hard tube is EK's first sample uh, of brass tubing so you saw it earlier in the year on our expo show and this is the first time we've ever used it this is my first time trying out what what may become our tools for the for the tubing and everything went quite nice so uh, I hope you'll be seeing it very soon I saw lo lots of questions in the build up to the chat asking if the if the case will come back. Uh, this this was a limited run of 200 pieces and that's it for now. So we won't just make another 200. That's exactly the same. That's not fair to the the people who originally bought it. But we will definitely have more collabs for cases and more cases of our own to come in the future. So um, you know. It won't be identical, but we will certainly continue this ethos behind case design, and we absolutely love the the finish that we got with Inwin. So uh, I hope I hope we'll have more Inwin collaborations too. Okay, so uh, I did actually do everything that. Uh, I asked you to remind me on the first day so I took the CPU block off and replaced the white plastic washers with black steel ones put the thermal paste in there so this doesn't need to come apart now this is final um, I will probably need to take the cover plates off to root the tubing uh, to root the cables when I've made them but I would like first to have them in place while I'm making them Um, the tubes you can expect uh, later in the year. Right now, um, they won't be coming because of vacations of suppliers and stuff through the summer. But as soon after that, we'll we'll add them when we can get enough enough ready to to fulfill all orders. Um, we said there would be uh, nickel. Uh, there will be like matte black, the same black as we have on black fittings and uh, satin titanium, maybe even gold when we add all the gold stuff. Uh, Kool-Aid says, will you guys bring water blocks for quad cards for M2 SSDs? Um, potentially, I presume you mean like a specific um, 
uh, specific like the the Aorus solution that has all four drives inside. Uh, yeah, for sure, we consider it if they need it. Okay, so I think it's time for us to get on with uh, taking the case apart, looking how the radiators fit, and moving forward with the build. Yeah, Troy will also have the, the same matte black plating that the fittings have, so exactly the same. So you'll finally be able to get the, the ZMT look in a rigid tubing. Not the best fit. Let's see. Ah, all the difference. Now I have this, the right angle of Phillips head. Yeah, Asus and Aorus both make the the M2 PCIe adapter RAID cards, uh, like you said, Cool Ed, but um, none of them are really in massive demand from us. We've seen so much, uh, so many requests for active backplates and for different different PCBs in in the last year when with all the GPU block launches that we've honestly not. Uh, put such things quite high on the list and um, then the novelty of the moment seems to be active backplates uh, FBI, <laughs> FBI in the chat I can assure you when we release the case you will get uh, a newsletter and all of the PR for a case as well but at this time uh, we don't have any immediately upcoming, but lots, lots in progress, lots in development. Yeah, just like, uh, just like Clockmaster says, any product we make takes time, and uh, generally we want to cover things that are being released at that time, so. GPU blocks really have to get priority. We know that they're needed in high quantity and in the past we could have one reference design to cover most customers and it seems with the availability in the last generation that we need to cover like every single AIB and uh, the leading ones all uh, sell in quite similar volumes for us. Uh, Calvin, why don't your terminal for the active backplate have a pass-through? So uh, we configured them in series. So coolant first flows through the actual block and then the active backplate in series because they have completely different restrictions. So it's quite challenging to run them in parallel. We could add like a false restriction to one of them, but uh, to be clear, like the, the best cooling would come from having them in series because they're so different and the heat load of one is massive the heat load of the other one is tiny you can imagine that if the the less restricted block would get way more coolant and then you basically uh send all the coolant where it doesn't need to be it should be in the in the high heat put outside of the card so it makes sense that they're in series Armando anxiously waiting for the gold fittings <laughs> Would it be possible to have gold plating instead of nickel plating on the blocks? Yes, it is possible. Obviously, uh, it's not cheap and we've done it a few times in the past for special cards. So, um, yeah, absolutely, it can be done. I think the last one we had was for the Titan, the Titan RTX when it first released as an RTX card. So I think the first thing I'll be doing when I've got this apart is to fit the pumps. 
Uh, they go in the base of the case in front of the power supply and from there I will make the cable specifically for the pumps. I'm not going to have any connections so I won't have any Molex cables or anything like that but I'll wire everything directly to the power supply. I also won't have any controllers, any fan controllers, any light controllers. Um, that's just the way I like to do things so it can be super clean and um, you know absolutely zero software nothing adaptable because I don't like to hear that the fans are changing speed so if they're a constant speed that's absolutely fine with two 480s in this case uh, there's really no reason that they should ever need to ramp up Uh, cool idea. I wish I could throw a name shut up and take my money. Yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, we will consider M2 blocks for sure, especially as uh, we, we make so many M2 heat sinks for different people and they're still really popular, just the standard EK one. So for sure, we know there's a market for storage products. We're also interested to see if that will be the same case for DDDR5 when it arrives. One screw left for this side. Are they made out of gold or is it just a little gold bath? Um, uh, our fittings that we make that are gold finished, so the ones that we have right now, which are the gold um, compression rings and the gold color rings, they're actually anodized and we will soon be introducing real gold plated uh, fittings. So. They're actually brass, just like everything else, and then it's nickel and gold plated. Uh, Troy, there is not one single release date for the Matrix 7 line. It definitely won't all come at once. And basically just from one point forwards, every product we release in the Quantum line will be Matrix 7 compatible and you can expect the first pieces in October and everything to come from them. Uh, FBI, this case doesn't have any side panels so the, the top half is completely open and there's not much airflow through it. It was designed purposefully as a liquid cooling case so the best way to configure it is that these fans on the inside, you can see, see the bracket here, they intake and then on both sides of the front compartment, the radiators will exhaust simultaneously. Um, the reason being the radiators are much more restrictive, so it makes sense that these uh, fans, which have very little restriction, pressurize the whole chamber, and then that comes from both sides. Okay. I'm going to move it around a little and get on with the other side, so I'll be hiding behind the case. Clockmaster, I'd like to know why you keep GPU blocks are fed center die rather than a flow design so the coolant does not split paths. Um, so the logic behind entering on the center is that you effectively put one block in parallel with itself and you have doubled the cross section through the cooling engine and that means that you have uh, considerably less restriction for equal or even better cooling performance because the heat is concentrated in the middle of the die so it makes sense that the coolest the very coolest coolant is concentrated there too uh hey ben Good to have you with us.
Yeah, FBI, there's no uh, huge airflow like through the case. It's, it's, it's not pressurized uh, inside, so it doesn't get too dusty. It's, it's sheltered by the top, but uh, still, if it's open, it's easier to clean. FBI, how much time does it take on average to build an air-cooled PC versus a water-cooled PC? I'm going to assume you meant normal water-cooled PC. So if you were just installing a kit uh, with soft tubing, I'd say you could definitely have it done in, in one day. Um, if you're doing air builds, a highly skilled person will complete six in a day. So. Yeah, it's quite a big difference. And when you get to a build on the on the level of this, where uh, you know it's rigid tubing and you want everything to fit exactly right, I'd say absolute minimum is three days work. If there's some planning beforehand and projects can run into months or even years when when people become really attentive to every detail. So as much time as you want to spend. Um, I think after a point you get more interested in what you can do with the build than what you can do with the PC, so. Yeah, of course we've EK'd out with this build, Tony. <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear me from behind the case, but the plan is when the panels are off, then I will empty everything from the bottom, fit the pumps, or at least the brackets for the pumps, because they screw from underneath the case. Then mount the pumps inside and radiators on these side brackets, and then figure out how the tubing can work. Hi Martin. I think uh, FBI, no matter how much kind of experience you have with building PCs, it, it, it really doesn't make you much faster. You know, maybe you know, the first time you try something and the first time you try tubing, the first time you try sleeving or making your own cables, it's a bit different. But after that, you just invest as much time as you want to and, and it's really down to how detailed you want to be. Ah, standoff that we lost on the first day. Uh, 
uh, these are the original cages for hard drives which we definitely won't be using in this build so take those out for more cable space I think the best way for me to fit the pumps is if I put the case down on its front side. So I just want to check it's clean, I don't drop it on a screw. Right, pumps. So, uh, I actually need to build up the pumps for this because the case is so old at this point that it wasn't designed for the, for the latest uh, quantum pumps, but back then we still had the Revos. I still have two really old pieces of the top, and in here are D5 Varios rather than the usual PWM D5s. These ones uh, have a little tiny controller on the back that you can change the speed. For this case, for me, that's perfect because I won't run any controllers, I won't use PWM, so if I can just set them and forget them forever, that's the best way. So we're going to install these brackets into the case. I have the screws which were originally supplied inside the case, and then the pumps will just push inside then, you know, the case can be on its feet. Make a mess again while I find the right screws. In distro plates, the flow path is frosted, but the borders are as invisible. Um, to an extent, um, you can see in, in this case, like now it's here, that the, the area that's frosted is where the lid covers the distribution plate. Oh, hi, Andy the Lab. I didn't notice you're in here. Hope you're. Are you, are you also going to PAX? Will you. Be that with the build. Does the D5 pump get hot? Uh, no, D5 pumps don't get hot at all. And the accessory basically is just aesthetic. It just covers it up and helps you manage the cables. Um, the big difference between the D5 and the DDC and other pumps is that the D5 is liquid cooled. I know that sounds odd, but it's it's coolant uh, that's in the loop is what's cooling the pump, so it's a bit more powerful, and all of that heat goes into the into the loop. Whereas the DDC, uh, it remains in the pump and it's dissipated mostly to the air. So uh, it's important that you know that that you don't put the DDC somewhere with no airflow, um, but it also has its advantages. So these little rubber sleeves uh, help prevent any vibration from the pump and now we're going to fit these in the base of the case. Remember to put the little screws on the outside so I can adjust the pumps later. I 
Hope this screws are long enough. That one didn't seem to be. Interesting. Okay, no, no pumps today, guys. So these are our old school D5 Varios, you can see here the speed adjustment and yeah, old school cables, no, no PWM wire, just the speed signal and that's it. Uh, TG, Joe, I won't be using the inertia tops because they're a bit too big for the for the case, the case was too old. Um, it was made and finished before the inertia tops were designed. So I have the original uh, Revo spare parts. Although, maybe not all of them. <laughs> So this was the inertia and because of the because of the RGB it got quite a lot bigger than it used to be. Uh, you can see the difference there. So we will be using the original in this build just because it fits with where the holes are. It's not that these couldn't fit in the case, uh, but the, the holes are just a bit too far forwards. Yeah, the, the 909 fitted the standard EATX size board, so like Rampages, but nothing bigger. So uh, Zeniths don't fit. Uh, they actually extended them height-wise. Extremes don't fit. And it starts to show its age for that reason. Uh, ben, I will be using uh, 1012, the satin titanium that's already in the main part of the build. And then in the outside, I'm using 1016 uh, ZMT. So when building up the pumps, the O-ring sits on this shoulder and it goes together just like a fitting actually. It's, this is basically a big open compression ring. So I'm going to prep this pump, but we won't be fitting it today because I have the wrong screws and that will be something to add before we start on day three. Uh, I just showed you so you can see them going together.
Okay, since we can't do this, then I'll flip the case back. And I think we can unbox the radiators and fans. Pretty big radiators. So. Uh, JM, yeah, you're quite right. We do state that um, products are not compatible with uh, concentrated cleaning solutions. And in our testing, we have the least problems when the loop is flushed with uh, cryopeal clear. That's the best thing to prep for our coolant is our coolant. When we were when we were testing the the solid coolants, we put together a huge sample of of people, and that's what we figured out. So. So these are the fans I've got. These are the Vada Evo ERs, extended range. I picked these because they will spin the slowest. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use two of this radiator and you're absolutely right. It's overkill. Um, reason being, I don't want the fans ever to spin up. There's space for them in the case, so that's what I do. I, this case is big enough for, for two GPUs for sure, but I'd rather have it completely silent. So with the fans, my plan is that I will mount them all on the radiator, take all of the cables, I'm gonna cut the end off every single one and solder the like pins together and use these uh, male, female ATX connectors. So uh, this is like a four pin EPS, the same as you would use for power on a motherboard. and. I need four pins, one, one for each wire, although I will only use two of them out to the power supply. And then if I ever want to swap fans, if I want to clean the fans, I can just disconnect and then make each side change each side to suit. And I will make a permanent extension cable that goes off to this power supply specifically. So no connections beside this one. It's a really good one because it's, it's locked together. They won't fall apart. And it really helps for this case because when the radiator is mounted inside, it's hard to access to clean it. You don't want to blow the back into the build. So if I can just unscrew it, pull the whole assembly away and have enough slack in the tubes that it can come to the side of the build and clean it out. So first things first, so I get myself orientated, I will mount the radiator to the bracket.
Uh, for this, it won't use the standard radiator screws, but countersink ones supplied with the case. And that's these ones right here. Yeah, for sure, for sure overkill. I think my one of my favorite builds I ever had, uh, I had a rig with three 780s and SLI, and I had three 360s and a 480 with a single D5, and it was just absolutely silent. I used to run the fans at 400 RPM, whether I was, uh, you know, idling the PC, browsing the internet, or benchmarking and overclocking all three of the cards to the limit so that's what I want to have here too Hi Gregor In before 43090 kingpins, yeah that would be lovely If, on, if only quad SLI was still a thing, that's what we'd be doing today no doubt. So I see we had one question from Kool Aid uh, between nickel, titanium, and copper, which is the most durable over time? So Ultimately, copper is the most durable because nothing can happen to it besides uh, it will begin to corrode if exposed to the air, but the, you know, that's purely cosmetic. So you can expect it to change, you can expect it to get dull over time, but it won't have any negative impact on anything around it. Just won't look the same. So in a, in a respect of kind of 24 hour operation, not caring about how it looks underneath acetal, copper is the most durable. Um, nickel is basically used so that it looks consistent, that after a year or two years, it won't change color, it's a bright finish and it remains a bright finish. You can clean it and if you look after it, uh, I'm sure it will last as long as the hardware. And titanium, is not something we've ever tried on a cold plate yet for the reason that it's very difficult to apply for big surfaces and it doesn't go on the inside of fittings it's it's only on the outside it doesn't it doesn't wrap through at every surface so um it doesn't really count since it's not inside the loop TG, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and do it in three days. I must admit, I already feel like I cheated a bit. Although this is day two of the stream, it's definitely day three of my work on it. Um, but I think that mostly comes down to planning and look, like having this case, um, there's not much that can change, you know? It's, it's how it is. Um, I didn't want to modify it because this is this is the last one like I mentioned so I'd like it to stay as original as possible uh, the fans are gonna exhaust to each side so I'm gonna put them in this orientation I have to put them all the same Otherwise, it just won't feel right. <laughs> and then to secure the fans, I will use the original radiator screws.
Uh, Lorenzo, the radiators do not have a unique flow direction. You can go either way. They're completely symmetrical on the inside. Um, the same applies to our next generation radiators, which will be coming later next year. Uh, FBI, the titanium tubes are the first ever uh, sample that we had. So you don't get them on the site just yet. We obviously need to do some testing, proving with them, checking that we can make them consistently. So uh, these are the first ones that you see here. Everything went nicely with the build. It was nice to cut them. So I think that will be a good experience for all of you guys. Yeah, Brian, absolutely. Fan cables are a pain. So I'm going to cut most of them off. It's not the way I would say everyone should do things, but that's the way I like to have it. Oh, hi, Joe. Glad you could make it. Yeah, as Kool-Aid said, like Plexi will have absolutely no reaction from from any metallic problems. That's not to say you can't damage it with coolant, but it should always be cleanable. Yeah, uh, silicon out. Yeah, we do have a. A temperature sensor already launched. Um, I think it's listed in the site as a loop accessory for Connect. TG tested two 480s and a 360 in the in the in the 909. Fan cables, do you have a solution for daisy chaining with next gen? Yeah, we're definitely gonna clean things up with next gen. Um, not just simple daisy chaining, but a few more surprises to come in terms of fans. I'm just gonna take these out. Actually, I'm gonna get radiator number two so I can prepare them both at the same time. I do the same thing on both sides otherwise I'll lose where I'm at and have two different fan systems going on. TG remove the red logo sticker. <laughs> I'm leaving it there for Atta though, okay? Yeah, opium, you really can't have enough radiator.
Uh, this isn't actually 2420s FBI, this is 2480s, so a little bit bigger. TG, you won't like reaching into the rad chamber like that. And you have one on QDCs. Okay, yeah, so rather than QDCs, I will basically uh, take the front one and make the tubing tight to that. And then the back one, I'll try and have really long tubing so I can, I can take it far off, but not disconnect it. Troy, Troy, yeah, I'm also gonna mount four, four, four fans on a rad with only one cable, but I need to make it, so I guess, I guess the Leon leads are helpful for that. Uh, Robert Moses, I think you missed my explanation of the airflow for the case a while back so basically the front chamber will have three intake fans and they pull the air from the middle over the build so that's a you know obviously not meaningful negative pressure because it's open but some airflow through the hardware over the ram and the vrm heat sinks etc and that will pressurize the outer chamber and then the radiators and the power supply both exhaust from it. Uh, FBI, the titanium tubing wasn't actually bent by myself because it needs to be bent prior to the plating. Um, the way these tubes were made they were uh, formed with fixtures and rolled around and the tube itself was actually machined to, to an accurate diameter it's not just raw tube stock but it's it's turned on the outside so it has a really perfect finish um, and bent and later plated with the same exact plating as we use on the fittings Mike, is there another device in the PC world that uses Molex? What, what's the first one? Um, practically everything uses some of Molex's connectors since they make the design for almost all connectors. But yeah, the, the pumps I have for this originally use Molex, but I will change them to the six pin auxiliary connector from the power supply. Yeah, it's all off. You make a great point about SATA. Um, not only are they they fragile, it's also not such a high current rate thing as Molex pins were. What did you want to have a distro for? I missed that. Andre, the, the most interesting thing that I tested last time. Uh, last time we were building or last time ever?
Yeah, I agree with Ben. The 9 to 8 is really hard to find. We we tried to get one for... Hmm. I can't think. I think it was our summer expo in 2020. And we ended up just with a 9 to 5. But it was still a really nice case. Andre, most interesting component I've ever tested. Um, in terms of liquid cooling and at EK, I think one of the most interesting things was I was testing the 1080 block before the 1080 launched and doing quite nicely in, in benchmarks. Um, and the thing I enjoyed overclocking and testing with the most in general hardware was I had four radio, two Radeon Pro Duos, so like four-way crossfire, and that was excellent fun. Yeah, Jack, the the EVGA Dark um, Z490 monoblock that included the two Radeon 7s, uh, I've still not turned it on. The, the loop never had coolant inside and no testing done. Maybe to preserve it, I don't know. Uh, put the... Uh, for this build, I will be using uh, an EVGA 1000 Watt T2. Um, my favorite power supplies to work with are uh, Silverstone because they have the friendliest pinout, but uh, I do also like the EVGAs other than the 24 pin, which is a huge amount of work. So 24 pin will definitely be off stream. <laughs> Silicon art, so the fans will be locked at 400 RPM, pump set to 50. I don't think I will need 50, maybe lower. Uh, probably the minimum speed because both D5s will be in series. There's not much restriction for this loop. Even though it's complex, there's not many blocks and the rads are really high flowing because they're so thick. So pump speed, I will set to minimum. Not, not PWM, but minimum because I have varios. And then the fan speed, I will, when I've spliced all the wires together, I will try them at 5 volts. And if they run reliably, then I will just leave them permanent 5 volt DC, so no PWM control. If that fails, then 7 volts. I don't know what speed that will be, but it should be quiet. It can be a problem if you undervolt fans too much that they don't spin they just get stuck. While they would be happy to spin if they don't get uh, a high current to start with. Okay, so first thing for the fans, I will take off the heat shrink. And then I'll cut one wire at once so I know where it came from. Because they're all black, they're not marked, and if I just cut the end off, I'll forget which pin did what. <laughs> So 
So I will start by taking pin one off every fan. And the same for the second rad. And the final fan. So now I know that the loose wire is the first pin from every fan and I won't mix them all up, hopefully not. Uh, Constantin, yes, this is uh, an in-win. This was a special edition that we uh, we developed. It started as a mod uh, way back almost three years ago. Um, it was actually a mod which I made for CES and it was the first time we ever unveiled the Quantum products. So uh, it was designed as a showcase and I made this two chamber design where the radiators and pumps and power supply are all hidden and then everything else is in the middle so from that when when it was shown at ces then everyone absolutely loved it and uh we made it as a retail case together with him when the distribution plate of course all made in slovenia by uk and then the the chassis in taiwan um, all came together. Round of show, you take pics of every cable position before you unplug it. Yeah, you, you're quite right, but these are all black, so it wouldn't be a very helpful picture. <laughs> So now I'm going to cut them all to the same length. I need a little bit of slack on the lower one so they have space to move. And the last one. So now it's time to strip the wire. Strip the wire, not cut the whole thing off.
No, by hand it is. So I'm going to fold them against each other in pairs and then twist together. And I just want to check the lengths are okay because I lost some. the big one yeah great So now they're all together, I'll put a little solder before crimping just to make sure one doesn't escape and do the same with the radiator too. Someone know how 990k started? Uh, yeah, it, it started with us wanting to build a showcase for the new Quantum products back when we released them. And there wasn't really anything like magnificent case-wise still available at the time. So we made a, a pretty serious mod uh, and that used two 909 chassis uh, one was cut to fit inside the other one and uh, when Inwin saw it then you know uh, and the rest of EK saw it then it was obvious that's something we wanted to have make it available to everyone and so uh, we joined forces and and put it into production um, EK and Inwin always had uh, some collaborative projects so it was really kind of a mutual thing that when, when everyone saw how good it looked, we both both wanted to have it. So uh, I think EK were the, the main instigators because, you know, we chose to to make the mod, to build it up that way. So that was the main inspiration. And from then it was quite a long process to get it to a finished product. Alright, gonna find some small solder. Uh, so even though these are going to go inside the crimp, I want to get just a little bit of solder just to make sure because crimps are designed for holding just one wire. 
so to make sure they're all stuck together I'm just gonna melt a tiny bit of solder in maybe Okay, and the other pin. I think they are ready to crimp. I'm going to trim the end. and find my female ATX crimp. So the crimps will fit like this with the, the longest leg around the insulation that will hold all the wires together and to short legs around the exposed wire and solder. Tricky, tricky. So there we have it, that's now a female ATX pin that will go into the female side and then we'll make an extender from the opposite side. Just like any other PSU cable that will connect to this and go back to the power supply. When we've made the, the both the ground and the power then we'll test the fans. So because this was pin one, I will put them into pin one on the opposite side of the connector. And one. A bit tight somewhere. Think a little, a little solder or wire sticking out. I I see now the wire was a bit too long inside.
There we go. Okay, so now we can move on, repeat that with the second pin on each fan wire. How are things going? I see a PTG versus acrylic debate arising. Uh, he'll be pleased to know I'm firmly on the acrylic side. Thinks that the higher the higher plastic transition temperature of acrylic makes it much more suitable for for any build, really. But definitely mine. Uh, Joe, these are these are ATX connectors, so I'm using a female on the power connector side, and then crimping a male onto the onto the fan itself. Acrylic or ZMT, which is the true god? Big question, that Jake. Very big question. I think it probably comes down to ZMT. Because, you know, you know what you've got when you've got ZMT. And everyone else can see, that's what's important. If you've got acrylic, you don't know it's not PETG. Yeah, TG, I think that, that the ZMT for the exterior of the 909 makes the most sense by far. doing it because ATX is easier to source Joe but because it's much easier to make uh, firstly the extension back to the power supply because it's not going from the really small uh, fan connectors to the ATX where you want a big wire on one end and you want a small wire on the other end for it to fit together uh, but the main reason is that they have a latch so they don't come apart and you can be a bit ruthless with the radiator when you're trying to push it inside and you 100% know it didn't fall apart and all your fans are still properly connected. So that's the main value I see in going with ATX. Renovation Joe. On one of my builds, I ran an XC360 with ring TT fans, removed radiator sheet, and ran my fan cables through the fins. Nice! Nice! That's a great hack. I have had to do that before where the, the radiator was just show, so on show that there was nowhere for them to root. and. I cable tied the wire from the first fan along the spider back across to the hub of the second fan, soldered them together and then off the radiator through the inside like you described. Um, so yeah, like I joined all the fans up on, on the inside. 
I w it was in a case where the radiator was next to a, a distribution plate like this so it will be really obvious from behind because the distribution plate was all plexi and I wanted it to have no fan wires on both sides it was quite a lot of work TG mustard sleeve cable. I probably have some mustard down here somewhere. I hope you're all enjoying the the longest session of someone putting radiators together in history. Okay, we've got to be a bit careful these don't all get crossed over into some rat's nest, but they should all tuck behind the screws on the fans afterwards. I'm glad you find it relaxing, Silicon. <laughs> Jake, yeah, we, we get fast assembly. I don't even want to tell you how painfully slow it was in, in real life. That was a very fast assembly. <laughs> Okay, nice. So when we've put these two fans together, put the crimps on, then I can make a short cable to test them. I need to be careful not to leave the wire too long like I did last time, otherwise it doesn't fit inside the Terminal housing. Hi Justin! 
great to have you. <laughs> I hope all you guys can come hang out in the studio sometime next year. We'll have a good time here. We're not just in a warehouse like last time, right, Justin? Uh, Nick, what were you looking for a glimpse of? We have some things in the set which I can I can bring into shot if that's what you were hoping to see. Uh, so these are pin two. Pin two and pin two here. I'm being tricky again. I'm having the same problem as last time where I crimped it. The wires are just sticking out too much. Hopefully I can just push them down good enough. And there we go. Okay, so we now have the ground and the voltage for each fan uh, wired into these little blocks. So I will take the power supply um, and I need to quickly make two ATX extensions to join them up. I think I will just make a test one with no sleeving for right now. So these are the usual female ATX crimps. And then I'm gonna need the four pin connectors and a six pin from the power supply, which is over here. And two wires. Hi, Tweak PC. Hi Bandy.
And the other end, again, these ones will have a female connector on both ends because the male is attached to the fans, so these will basically, when sleeve, just look exactly like they were an EPS connector or something else. Nice, nice. So pin one, two on the four pin, which are the lower ones. And then I need to check out the, the power supply pin out so I don't mess this up. So 5 volt is pin 3 and pin 2 is a ground, so we'll try that first. So from pin one to pin two for the ground and from pin two, the voltage of the fan to pin three on the power supply side. And let's see how this goes. There's a chance that five volts is too low for these fans to spin up or it might be perfect. Looking like it's too slow. Nice. I think we can live with that. Let's test out the other fans. Make sure these cables don't go in the blades. Let's see if these guys can all start. I think five volts is really on the edge for these fans. This one struggles. Yeah, that's right, Joe. Just just five volt, and now I'm done for two years. And this is definitely not very fast. Maybe, maybe 500 RPM. I think that will do fine for this build. So, I'm happy with five. So the next pin along is the fan reporting. Um, I'm not going to use it. It's not going to go anywhere. So I will probably just remove them all. I guess that I should 
connect one to be correct. Then if, if I ever make, uh, make a change to the wiring or I add a controller, then I can still keep this connection and just make a different cable for it. Yeah, Joe, you really should have, you really should have mod zero on here. What's up with that? Do I have a rule of thumb for five volts? Not really. It's, it's just down to the individual fan. They should, they should all get enough current. Unless I made a mistake with the wiring and one didn't spin up, then I would have to revisit that or replace the fan. But if they spin, they spin. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're all wired together or any other variation. Generally, like high speed fans do better with five volts. If you get a really low range fan that only goes to 1200 or something, then they very rarely turn on with just five volts. But you can always make uh, seven volts by using the five as a ground and plus 12 as the power. So then you have seven. So I will use just the first fan on, on both sets to wire the speed reporting, the, the tack wire from the fan. And the reason being, if you, if you wire them all, then the signal just becomes nonsense because it's reporting a speed of four fans uh, with one waveform. So you don't get a reliable number. You might be lucky and get four times the number, but in reality, it normally just wildly varies. And it makes it absolute nonsense. Uh, what size and types of fittings do we have here? Um, on the inside of the build, they are HTC 12s with our 12 millimeter rigid tubing. This is brass. Uh, it's not actually 1012 because that's unnecessarily thick when it's brass. Uh, it's 10 and a half, something like that. Um, and on the outside of the build, I will have black uh, STC 1016s with uh, 1016 ZMT tubing. This crimps I will probably need to squish first because it's such a small connector. Uh, it's such a small wire gauge, sorry. So I will just pre-tension it and then put the wire in the middle. It's holding on pretty good. So this I'll put to pin number three. Uh, one, two. So this will be on the opposite side to one. It's really hard to push inside with such a thin wire. I think I need something to poke it. There we go. And my second crimp, I think just right here. Again, pre-crimp it.
There we go. Techwise inside, and that just leaves PDBM. I need to remove the tack wire from the other fans so I don't confuse them with each other first. The best I can do is cut them really short. In the past, I've pulled them off the, off the motor, <laughs> but because they're stuck together, I risk that I'll pull off all the cables uh, if I don't separate them, so I'm just gonna cut them off really small. Yep, you're right, Justin. Talk is definitely legit. So when these are gone, that just leaves me to solder together all the PDBMs. Uh, I don't expect to use them in this build, but it might just save the fans for something useful another day rather than cut them off. Justin wants to be a fangirl. That's great news. Uh, Christian, yeah, we actually would certainly like to have some stock ready in America so you guys can get everything just as freely as from Europe. I think it would also help with customs So yeah, we would love that. Until then you still have, of course, all of our American distributors, everything pretty much is on Amazon too, so. Absolutely, Justin should be in the green room for for after the live show, I think, Jake. Thought I lost one wire then.
Uh, silicon art, it's not that the, the high speed fans take less power, but it's at what voltage. So if you have a really tiny range, imagine what, then when you cut the, the power in half, the fan would barely be spinning. So um, a high range fan is more likely to run at a low voltage. But I don't think anyone really considers it anymore because they just assume everyone will want to use a PWM protocol and not have DC control, but I don't want any control. Power wire mod, <laughs> yes. Mod all of the wires. I'm glad that you're enjoying it that much, Jen. I, uh, I must admit, I didn't think I would be cabling for the entire sleeve, uh, uh, entire, entire stream, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I really don't want to cut this wire off again. Got him? Hi, Jonathan. Glad you could join us. Yeah, at, at the moment we don't have any um, giveaways or codes planned for this. It was really an impromptu thing on our side to, to test out our new modding room, which we'll be using for a lot more stuff. We, you can expect that we will make a, a formal introduction to the room in the next few weeks. So uh, you can take a look around, look at all the equipment we got and how we've laid it out. I think it's, it's quite interesting from both the building and recording perspective. Uh, I'm sure lots of you want to make content also. So I hope you'll enjoy the walk around. For now, this is a build that we need to get done to go to PAX. Um, we will have a booth there, lots of stuff going on. So this is the representative for quantum products mainly. Great, and the other one is really hidden away down here. I don't want to stick the soldering iron into the wires. once. 
good soldering session. <laughs> yes. Shout out to everyone behind the scenes for sure. I hope it's a relaxing evening for those guys just as much as you, so they cannot. <laughs> Oh god, we've got some Power Tools fans in chat. Makita number one, maybe. I think practically every EK product gets assembled with Makitas, so... That's why we got them up here. Yeah, Jin Hang, uh, Matrix 7 stuff, you can expect it to appear in the first products in the next few months, but it will take quite a while before everything is there, you know, every radiator and every size. So be patient, and when it's all there, I'm sure it will start to make much more sense. So now connecting the last pin, uh, I'm not going to use these in the build, but I just want to keep all the wiring together with this and maybe in a future build these rads will go in just, just like this, so good to have it. I think I've done this. Got just enough practice in on this stream now. And there we go, so both sets of fans are now all wired together. I need to make some loops through the screws just to hold these tight to the radiator. So I'm probably gonna pull these out, push them all behind. become a bit messy where you separate all the wires but um, it's worth it to have one one connector for me and the, and the wires are like basically all hidden inside I hope all of my connections will be fine, Christian. Tested as we went along, but if anything, in practice, the ATX connection should hold together much better. Yeah, Justin, uh, do you have four of everything, just just to be sure, or you're just not uh, you're just not a fanboy of one brand when it comes to tools?
Yeah, I definitely need something to put these together, Justin. I suppose if I'd have thought, I would have put them through the heat shrink on the way. I must admit, I was a bit distracted by you guys when cutting the wires. Not, not, not an excuse, but not, not the neatest. So there we have it, a couple of long wires in there, but not so bad. Yeah, now it's just blue. Yeah, Justin, I think this this method is worth trying if you absolutely can't wait for our new fans. So, I need to tidy up all the dead pieces of fan wiring to cover the desk. And then we'll see where we're at. So I can't really fit the pumps because of the screws, which I need to get tomorrow. Um, I'm also missing one of the pumps, uh, O-rings and compression rings. So I need to find that. Um, power supply can go inside in a moment. So you can take a look where it goes. And then I think we'll be getting ready for work tomorrow. So The PSU is going to go down here and then in the back of the case we have uh, cable management plates for all of the cables to go through. So I will start by putting all of the connectors in up here, threading wire through down and getting it the right length to here. Um, and when I've made all the wires I'll add all the sleeving. Um, you can expect before we start tomorrow I'll have some of that done and then we'll probably finish uh, one of the easy ones on the stream, so maybe the EPS. Um, and then also looks like radiator tubes and final fitting will be a job for tomorrow. So, should have left the film on there, it was blue to match the pack theme. Yeah, we could have had the blue EK badges. Good shout. Um, Let's secure the power supply. Otherwise, it will smash across the case when I fit the pump screws tomorrow.
Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Um, I don't think I'll be doing any PSU slaving tonight, but first thing in the morning, find those screws, put the pumps in as as we saw today. Um, put the back radiator in, start wiring them up. I also need to wire the fans for the inside of the case. So there's three more fans to go there. And then when we have those, um, I can make all the extension cables, sleeve the cables on the pumps, and all that's left to do, all that's left to do is <laughs> all of the ATX cables for the build. So I hope you enjoyed today, even though it wasn't exactly planned and uh, we could only get the radiator assemblies together, but this is still a massive piece for next week. So. Uh, it's been great having you all. Um, I hope you join us tomorrow for the finishing of the build. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys.